Hi there, continuing on our series of questions and answers. Today, I'll answer an interesting question that I get a lot in my courses. I have, for example, this question from Ken, one of my students. Is there any difference between supporting a theme for WordPress versus supporting one for the WooCommerce plugin? And so, uh, just like Ken, there are a lot of students who ask me similar questions. And if you're not a student in one of my courses, you probably have the same doubt. So today, let's try to answer that question. Before that, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Here I'll always bring you some great information about WordPress, especially from the film developer's point of view. And you can, of course, like the video and click on the bell icon so you never miss another update. I also invite you to enroll in one of my courses with 18,000 students only on Udemy. The links are in the video description just below. Well, so let's go. Um, to answer this question, you need to know, first of all, that there are two ways for making a theme WooCommerce ready. The simplest way requires a simple installation of the plugin. That is, uh, if you want, you can use WooCommerce on any WordPress theme just by installing the plugin. You see that the theme, uh, the website, will work without too much hassle, with no further configurations. However, there is a more advanced configuration option. In the WooCommerce documentation, they call it declaring WooCommerce support. And you may ask me, uh, what is the difference between a single WooCommerce installation and declaring support? The difference is that uh, in the second process, declaring support, you'll end up with a theme that is fully compatible with WooCommerce. You will use the second process whenever you want to, uh, to have more control over the customizations you want to make in your theme. Let me give you an example just to make it clear. Let's suppose you want to be able to make changes on the main shop page. Uh, I mean, that one that uh, displays a list of products you have in your store. For instance, you want to fix the number of columns so that the user can't make changes to the amount of columns or fix the number of rows or the image sizes. So using the options in the admin, you can update those values, but you can't really fix them so that users can't change them later. If you want to make this kind of modification, it is not enough just to install the plugin. You need to declare WooCommerce support in your theme. Another very simple example. Let's suppose you want a tab in your product page uh, for your client to leave a review. If you just install the plugin, that won't be possible, at least not in the current version of WooCommerce. Also, the client support will give you access to many other cool things like uh, the WooCommerce template overriding system. Well, I'll show you all this in this video. Let's see in practice everything I've said so far. So first, uh, here in my WordPress, I have a theme that for now doesn't declare WooCommerce support. It's uh, this theme here, which is the initial version of a theme that I teach how to create in one of my courses. A couple of small details. My WordPress already has WooCommerce installed. It already has some products for our tests. And to make this kind of modification, you don't need any additional configuration in your WooCommerce, okay? Now, if I go over to the WooCommerce menu, status option, If I scroll down here until I reach this section with information about the theme, here under WooCommerce support, you see that it's not declaring support yet. So if I open the main shop page and to see it, yeah, I can click here in the main menu in the back end and choose visit store. I see that uh, with only the plug installed, I can see the products normally. So if I click here on one of them, I can view the product, I can add the product to the card, I can go to the card, proceed to checkout. That is, WooCommerce is working properly here on the site with the theme I'm using, even though it doesn't declare support, all right? But let's go back to the product page for a while. If you look carefully, instead of that tab with the reviews, I have here that standard WordPress comment form. So here's the first difference. In a thing that doesn't declare support, I'm left without this possibility, right? Well, let's go to another one. WooCommerce has a very complete mechanism for overriding template files, as I already mentioned. 
that simply means that you can grab any template file from the WooCommerce and modify it. So let me give you an example. Let's go back here to the shop page. You can see that a typical product has the following display order. First, you have the product image, this sale ribbon, then uh, the title, the prices, and this add to cart button. And what if I want to change this order? Let's suppose uh, um, I want to place the, uh, the title above the image. Well, we can do this with regular CSS, but the right way will be to modify the internal WooCommerce files, the so-called template files. There are files uh, used to display content on a page. Without declaring support, you simply can do this. So I have here in my WordPress a plugin called Show Current Template. What it does is uh, it shows which template file is being used uh, at the moment to display the page we are viewing. In this case, uh, you can see up here that uh, the file that controls this page here at the moment is page.php. That is, it's the same file that controls the static WordPress pages. I mean, uh, the way it is now, I don't have access to modify the internal templates of the WooCommerce plugin. There is simply no way because the page.php file doesn't have access to the internal structure of the store. To have access to this kind of modification, I would have to be able to modify an internal WooCommerce file called content-product.php, which is inside the plugins, WooCommerce, templates folder. In a little while, I will show you uh, how I came to this file. Let me open it here for you to see it. So this file here. To be able to modify this file, I need first to declare support to WooCommerce, but that's extremely easy to do. I just need to open up the functions.php file. And anywhere here in this file, but preferably within a function that is fired on the after setup theme action hook, I'm gonna be calling the add theme support function. and pass the string WooCommerce here to it. This function allows us to pass an array with other arguments to control other support settings, but that's not the case for this tutorial, all right? Now, if you refresh the shop page, you see here that the layout has been changed, right? It's uh, kind of weird, <laughs> kind of broken too, really strange. And up here, you see that uh, the file that controls this page is now archive product.php, which is inside plugins, WooCommerce, templates folder. If you open this file up, Well, I won't go into details about its structure, but uh, here between the lines 62 and 71, we have a loop and it's been used to call another file. It's not that obvious, but at this point uh, here, it's calling a file named content-product.php. It's this file, content-product.php, that generates the layout of each individual product. If I open this file, content product.php. If you pay close attention, at the top of the file there is uh, this small snippet with documentation. In fact, in all the files in this template folder there is something like this and it says more or less the following. If you want to overwrite this file, that is, uh, change the way it works by rewriting parts of the file, you cannot simply modify this file here. You have to create a folder in your theme called WooCommerce and inside it, place a copy of this particular file. And this one is the path where the file should stay in your theme. And you have to modify that copy, not this file here. I can never make changes directly to the original files, okay? I'll always have to work with a copy. But why, Marcelo? Uh, it's because any change I make here in the original file will be simply lost when I update WooCommerce, right? But those changes you make here in the copy will only work if your theme declares support, all right? As our theme is declaring support as of now, let's do a little test. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna copy uh, the whole content of this file. I'll head over to my themes folder, this one here called Fancy Lab. 
I'll be creating a folder called WooCommerce. And here I want to create again a file called content-product.php. Okay, file created. And I'll just paste the content of the original file here. So, all right then, now I have a safe copy to work with. And this one is the file I'll be messing with. Well, I won't go into details about how this file is structured because it will take too long. But basically, if you want to move uh, content from one place to another, which is what we want to do, move the title to the top, I could simply move these pieces that start with do action uh, from one place to another across the file. There is yet one more way to do the same thing uh, using the action hooks described here in the code, but that's quite complex for this tutorial. So here we go. Uh, what I can do is uh, cut out this part uh, that says do underscore action WooCommerce shop loop item title and paste it up here. Well, I know this because the name of the, the hook tells me so. It says here, item title. All right. <laughs> but if you don't know what each hook does, you can make use of some extra feature. For example, uh, there's a really cool plugin called Simply Show Hooks that can help you figure out which action hook you're going to mess with. In this case, I'm not using that plugin and I will do it uh, all by trial and error. So now I'm going to save it. I'll go ahead and reload the page. And now you see here that the title has moved up. Obviously, <laughs> you would have to fix the layout with some CSS or another technique, but uh, this would be the right way to customize the theme that has WooCommerce, all right? By declaring support, you'll also be able to fix this problem in the page container quite easily. So you can see here it's broken too. Let me give you an example. This theme here uses Bootstrap. So I could make a copy of the archive product.php file, which is the general template for the shop page, this one up here, and add some Bootstrap classes to the file. Uh, let me make a copy of it first. And now I'll just add the bootstrap container to it. You just have to know exactly where to place this element. I know what the right place is beforehand, but uh, this normally will involve uh, a lot of trial and error. So I know the container must start here. Let me stop the PHP here, add the container. And to switch back to PHP, I just open the PHP tag once again here at this point. And of course, I need to close the div down below. Let me just do the following. Now refreshing the page. Now look, <laughs> that worked. And if I look up here, you see that the template file that controls this page is now that one within our themes folder. Can you see it? So we are working with a copy of the template file now, not with the original file anymore. Now you can make any modification, but now in a safe way. Just repeat the same process I showed you here in this tutorial. I mean, uh, you open the page where you want to make the modifications, identify what you want to do, see uh, which template is being used, enter the WooCommerce template folder. Then you just need to make a copy of the file in the location specified in the file itself and make the changes you want. I need to point out uh, that sometimes you have to choose the file from these other internal folders, okay? But it's not always easy to identify at a glance which file you need to use. It may require a little bit of more study, uh, a little more research into the template files. So let's go for a final test. Do you remember that our thing didn't have a review form? So let's open one of the products once again. Now, check it out, <laughs> since our theme is declaring support, we have here a form for the client to submit a review. <laughs> cool, isn't it? 
Well, so that was it for now. I hope you liked the tutorial. In summary, then, uh, there are two types of adaptation you can make uh, for WooCommerce to work in your theme. One, it's very straightforward. Just install the plugin and start using it. And another is more complete and depends on the clearance support. Which one you use will depend on the type of customization you want in your theme. If you don't need to customize anything, just install the plugin and you're good to go. Otherwise, you have to declare support, okay? Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? There are a lot of cool things you can do on a theme once you declare support and understand more deeply the relation between the theme and WooCommerce. For example, uh, you can use the action hooks I showed in this tutorial to position anything in your layout or move things around. If you are interested in learning this and much more, I invite you to enroll in my course on WooCommerce theme development. In this course, I will teach you how to create a theme which is fully compatible with WooCommerce using the technique I brought to you today and many others. Also, uh, the course includes several subjects such as internationalization, security in WordPress themes, how to create a theme demo, and the most advanced subject of this course on how to make our theme available in the official WordPress repository, wordpress.org. You can even make some money on the site submitting your free theme to wordpress.org. In this course, I will tell you everything you need to know. The same subjects are also in my book, The Web Developer's Guide to WordPress, which is a big success among devs. The links to both the course and the book are in the video description just below. Don't miss them because they are both coming at a huge discount. So, okay guys, that was it then. So please subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up, click the bell icon to get new video updates, and I see you next time. Bye!